traditional for Muslims and memorials at that time. And again, as Oksana mentioned, uh, the original, uh, Mr. Tawel died and never saw the stained glass window and it is kind of a memorial uh, for him. So what can you tell me about your picture, ladies? It's falling water, it's falling water, and it's a small residence, a uh, small personal residence, uh, uh, and it's one of the most famous works by a friend called Wright. Uh, he designed and built this house over the water, this the house over the water, uh, between 1935 and 1939. And now it's open uh, for the public as a museum. Uh, he built it especially for a successful businessman whose name was uh, Edgar Kaufman. Uh, within his lifespan, Frank Hoyt Wright, um, he designed uh, over several hundred of buildings, uh, of which uh, 500 were built. Uh, also, Wright uh, promoted the so-called uh, organic architecture, and this uh, term he coined himself, uh, that means harmony between uh, natural world and human habitation. And the example of uh, falling water is one of the brightest examples of this kind of architecture. Uh, so this house, uh, which Time magazine put on its cover for claiming it the architect's most beautiful job, is truly a masterpiece. And uh, the small personal residence is constructed by planes, which are built in reinforced concrete. And the planes are also uh, fixed in the rock on the hillside, as you can see. And uh, uh, well, the key of this ensemble is, of course, the waterfall over which the house is built. So the waterfall is a part of this house. And uh, the interior of the house um, remains, uh, hasn't changed at all, at all, and it remains just as the Kaufmans lived in it. And uh, the furniture was designed specially by Frank Lloyd Wright, and it is mixed up with some pieces of furniture that the Kaufmans bought themselves. And it, uh, this house inspired the whole family and they got really interested in art and design. And uh, um, Frank Lloyd Wright didn't want the inhabitants of the house just to admire the waterfall. He wanted them to be a part of it and to live with it. And uh, he called uh, his uh, this house a great blessing, one of the great blessings to be experienced here on earth. And uh, well, this house um, embodies man's acceptance of a partnership with the environment and it, it became a symbol of uh, man's uh, respect for nature. What can you tell me? You feel comfortable? Go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, this picture, you can see different flags in this picture. The flag of the US, the flag of France, the flag of all Great Britain. And this picture was, really, was drawn in uh, 1917 when the first war had to start. So, the author wanted to depict that all these countries were friends. 
this picture is one of the twenty-two, one of the other twenty-two pictures in the Syria that is called Flag. The author belongs to the ten, which means that he wanted to create a new line in the He studied in France and had some uh, is a painting by John James Audubon and uh, the peculiarity of it is that it has not only artistic value but the scientific value as well and on the top of the painting we can see the parts, the depicted parts of the bird's body which gives a hint that it has something to do with the, sci with the science and uh, so uh, John James Audubon was not only an artist but also a naturalist uh, and ornithologist he devoted uh, a major part of his life to studying birds, he depicted them in their natural habitat, which is a peculiarity of his work, so that uh, the posture of the birds were not static, but uh, as if they were uh, depicted in their natural life in, in action. And uh, the peculiarity of this very bird, or uh, depicted bird, is that uh, the point was that he wanted to make uh, all the birds life size, and as a flamingo is quite a big one, there was a necessity to give that very peculiar curve to its neck, so that's why the, the posture is like that, and not, for example, like this one, because then it would be too too, too big to squeeze it into, into the page. And uh, uh, it is just one of the prints, and uh, in the book uh, Birds of America, where it is taken from, uh, there are 435 uh, birds. And it must be said uh, that his achievements were not only artistic, but scientific as well, because he discovered 25 new species and 12 new subspecies, which makes him uh, quite a successful scientist as well. Probably that's the most important part. I'd like to tell about the picture of the American flamingo which was painted in 1835. And it is interesting that for his drawings he shot uh, the birds, then he wired them into a lifelike position, and then only he took uh, pictures and he was drawing them. And as for flamingo, he always wanted to draw one, but he didn't have a chance because he moved to London, as in America there was no editor who wanted to print his book. And he asked a friend of his, to, uh, he was a minister in Charleston, to provide him a special support of the maker. Great. The wall over which the house is built, and uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Randy called the inhabitants just to admire the waterfall. You want to come to the uh, it is a and it is the highest building in New York City. Uh, the um, tourists and um, other people are very interested in this uh, building because uh, it is uh, very exciting and um, so, uh, very beautiful. Uh, it has. Um, it's a 370, 3,070 uh, uh, windows, triangle windows, uh, and uh, it's very hard to clean every window. <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> so, well, Great. as popularity of this building, so it's uh, it's ranked uh, ninth on the list of uh, the most uh, favorite buildings in. Uh, in America, and uh, so it is. Uh, it is famous for its uh, gargoyles uh, and spire. So uh, these gargoyles are the probably symbol of the Chrysler Corporation. And uh, <laughs> that was it was, it was, uh, ah, so yes, so it was created by. Uh, 
would have this name. Ah, William Ron Allen. And uh, so it was created in, in order to beat out the competitor of uh, the Baltic Chrysler. So uh, they tried to they tried to build the highest uh, building and uh, to beat out the Empire State Building, and they succeeded. And uh, so it was the the highest building for 11 months. Um, and then the Empire State Building. <laughs> Spoiled everything. <laughs> so that's it. Um, Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then there you go. Uh, I would like to say a few words about the project. Uh, the project is uh, called Fishing America and it's uh, an educational project which uh, consists of a collection of art masterpieces. And these, uh, most of these masterpieces uh, were dedicated uh, to some events, uh, historical events or other events. Um, I picture uh, it's called Down Girls Magic Valley, which was done by Albert Bierstadt. Albert Bierstadt uh, was a German American uh, painter. Uh, when he was a small child, he immigrated with his family to the United States. Uh, he uh, was uh, fond of traveling and his journals uh, inspired uh, him for his uh, paintings. And, uh, during one of his uh, journeys, he made some sketches, uh, some, took some pictures, and then uh, painted this amazing picture. Great.